Introduction to Neural Networks with C-Sharp, Class 5, Part 4. Welcome to Part 4. In this part, we will apply the genetic algorithms that we have developed to neural network programming. We will see how to train a neural network when presented with a training set. We will apply this to the XOR problem that we saw in the previous chapter. Of course, this can be applied to any training set application of a neural network, even things much more complex than the XOR. We will see hybrid training later on in this course, where we use backpropagation to train, and then we use simulated annealing or genetic algorithms to assist backpropagation when it gets stuck on local minima. We will now continue and look at how to apply the neural network training to a genetic algorithm. Just as was the case with the traveling salesman problem, you must also convert the neural network to a chromosome. Cre converting a neural network to a chromosome is actually fairly easy. The weight matrix is the entire memory of the neural network. You simply take the weight matrix and transform it from a 2D array to a 1D array and string all of the weight matrices together. There will be one weight matrix for the connection between every single layer. So if you had three layers, there will be two weight matrices for the connections between each of these two layers. This basically transforms the neural network into a long stream of numbers. This is ideally suited to a chromosome, and all neural networks of the same configuration will have the same length, which is also a requirement for using the genetic algorithm. To train a neural network using a genetic algorithm, we must first decide if we have a training set or not. For this example, we're following the XOR, so we do have a training set. Later in this class session, we will look at tic-tac-toe where we don't have a training set. We simply evaluate each game and proceed from there. If you do have a training set, use the training set neural genetic algorithm class that you see here. You pass in the network you want to train. True means that the network should be randomized for each life form. XOR input is the input data. XOR ideal is the ideal values for that input. 5,000 is the number of life forms in the gene pool. 0 0.1 means 10%, the top 10% will be chosen to mate, and 0 0.25 means that the top 10% will mate with any organism in the top 25%. The main loop for training with a genetic algorithm looks very similar to training with backpropagation. You will learn in the next class session when we discuss simulated annealing that simulated annealing also follows a very similar pattern. This is useful because you can substitute these algorithms for each other and see which one provides the best training. Sometimes you'll even use a hybrid approach where you will switch from one training method to another based on how good the current training method is performing. Often simulated annealing or genetic algorithms can be used to free backpropagation from a point called a local minima where it appears as though the backpropagation has simply gotten stuck and is no longer improving the training. Here we simply loop until the network is trained or we reach 5,000 iterations. Just as was the case with the traveling salesman problem, we must also implement the calculate cost and mutate functions. Here you see the calculate cost. The calculate cost for a neural network is relatively simple. We're going to basically calculate the overall error for the neural network and use that as our cost. This will allow the genetic algorithm to sort the organisms. Each organism will be a separate neural network that has been created to solve the particular problem. And we will sort these, these neural networks according to their costs and allow the most optimal ones to reproduce. Here to calculate it, we use the input and ideal and we calculate the error for the neural network just as we did with backpropagation. This error allows us to sort. 
Just like with the traveling salesman problem, we must also implement a mutate function. The mutate function will make a change to the weight matrix of the neural network that will introduce genetic material that was never present in any of the organisms to begin with. This is very necessary because sometimes the genetic material for the optimal solution simply is not present. To do this, to perform the mutation, we get the length of the genes and we loop over all of the genes and we multiply each of the numbers by a random ratio. This keeps the base, basic values that were there already, but either amplifies or changes them in some way, shape, or form that introduces entirely new numbers into the neural network, yet they're in a similar range to where they were before. This concludes part four. In the next part, you will see how to apply genetic algorithms and neural networks to a simple game, tic-tac-toe. This is unique in that there is not a training set. You simply provide feedback on whether the game played was good or bad based on if the neural network won or lost. We hope you will continue with part five. Thank you. This course is based on our Introduction to Neural Network Programming books for Java and also Introduction to Neural Networks for C Sharp. Available in both paperback and ebook format.